Thanks for tuning in. Hesty here. And today we're going to talk about doing an automatic to manual swap on Mark IV. Uh, Mark IV VW specifically. This is, uh, this project car is a 1.8 uh, and it was an 09A transmission and we're putting a 6 speed in it. So there's two main automatic transmissions and two main manual transmissions in this era of VW. They're a little bit different, uh, but we'll try to cover as best we can the, uh, the differences. Uh, most of them are immaterial until we get to the wiring section. So this is a pretty big project to do the manual to auto swap, but it's, it's very doable. But what you need to evaluate is how much is the car worth? Uh, these Mark Ford Golfs and Jettas uh, and Beetles also, really are about $3,000 cars in general. Uh, and this project can easily cost two grand. There's a huge variation in price. Uh, we'll talk pricing here in just a sec. But you need to evaluate, is it worth it or should I just go buy another car and start with one that's already a manual? So specifically on costs, uh, there's, uh, it's all about how you get the parts. And we'll have a segment here in just a few moments about all the different parts that you need. Uh, you can find on eBay, on Craigslist, on Marketplace, or maybe you know a couple of VW guys in your local area or your VW club or what have you. Uh, you can find kits, uh, and usually they're priced between 15 and 1700 bucks. So that's a pretty good gauge of about how much this project will cost. There's a, a lot more than you realize that you're gonna need. So before you go, oh my gosh, 1500 bucks. Uh, but like I was saying earlier, you need to consider how much is that car really worth? Do you really want to take a $500 car and put 1500 bucks into it? 1700 bucks. Oh, and while you're in there, you find a couple other things wrong. So then it ends up being 2200 bucks. Maybe, maybe not. It's, it's up to you and your car and what you want to do. And I am the last one to tell you how much to spend on your car or how much not to spend on your car. I really can't give you a total tool list for doing this project. You're gonna need a lot of tools. Uh, and there are different ways to get some of these different things done. But the first thing that I will highly recommend is the Bentley manuals for your appropriate model. For the Mark IV Golf and Jetta, it's a two, uh, two book set. Um, I got them off of Amazon. They're, they run about a hundred bucks, but this is, this is the best that we've got for manuals. Um, you could get the manufacturer, the actual Volkswagen service manual. Uh, that's really pricey. Maybe you already have access to it uh, through another job or something. Hey, that's fantastic. But if you don't, the Bentley is the next best thing going. It's not perfect. There are errors in it. Uh, but you're going to need torque specs for the clutch and for the flywheel and for the uh, axles. That's all in here. Plus, if you don't know how something comes apart, you can waste a lot of time and you can bugger a lot of things up trying to get it off the wrong way. Uh, so I highly recommend the Bentley manuals. So in terms of tools, that's my first recommendation. In addition, you'll need uh, triple square bits. You'll need Torx bits. Uh, you'll need, of course, standard hex head, you know, sockets and open end wrenches. Um, you're going to need a way to lower and lift that transmission in and out. It is doable with jacks, but that's not the preferable method. Uh, I happen to have this one on a lift because I'm very fortunate and I happen to have a lift. Uh, an engine support stand that actually mounts across the engine bay. That's on my short list of things to get next because that is really the proper way to do this. So you could support the engine while you separate that transmission and then lower it out. I use an engine stand. I don't know if you can see it in the background here. This is just a cheap one. I believe it's about 150 bucks. Harbor Freight, Northern Tool, uh, AutoZone, Napa, all those places have a, a foldable one so you can fold it back up when you're not using it, hide it in the corner of the garage or what have you. Uh, that's a pretty good way to do it. It is possible to put the car up on jacks and do the old transmission on the chest shimmy up under the car and bench press the transmission in i've done that plenty of times but i don't like doing that it's not fun it's a lot of work and i'm getting too old to do that 
So I'm using the engine hoist and the, and the uh, lift. Uh, one possibility that I forgot to mention in acquiring your kit or all the parts that you need, we've talked about kits that you can find on eBay, going to the junkyard, but probably the best method is buying a donor car. If you search Marketplace, Craigslist, Copart, what have you, if you've got room, buy a blown up engine, been wrecked, uh, whatever, for five, six hundred dollars, and then you have all the parts that you need, and maybe some other things that you can use. Uh, and you may be able to sell a couple of the other things off the car to the local VW club or something. But buying a donor car that's either you know blown up engine or it's been wrecked, uh, as long as that transmission is still good and your axles are still good. If it's been hit in the front and the side, you might have bad axles. Uh, but you can very frequently find those for five or six hundred bucks on Craigslist or Marketplace or what have you. So that might be the best way to go. All right, so the next step is let's go look at all of the parts that we're going to need to do this. And there's, it's a fair number. So I've got them set up over here. I'm going to move the camera and let's talk about all the parts that go into this. I mentioned earlier that you can often find somebody that sells a kit like on eBay or Craigslist or in your local VW club. So you got to decide right off whether you're going to do a five speed or a six speed. And it depends on the kind of car that you have. For example, the TDIs, it's very tough to find a diesel geared six speed. <clears throat> the transmissions may be the same, but they're geared differently for different engines. The 1.8, the 2.0 and the TDI, the transmissions will physically bolt up and, and you can put, put them on any of those engines, but they're geared differently. So for the car to perform properly, it's important to match the gearing. By the way, the VR6, you can do the same uh, transmission swap on, but the VR6 bolts up different. So 1.8, 2.0 and TDI are all the same bolt pattern and many of the same parts. The VR6 is not. In this case, this came as a kit from a local car dismantler that put the kit together. But I have made my own kits, basically, going to the junkyard. And it all depends about availability in your area. Uh, I have gone to the uh, local you pull it junkyard and walked out with everything I needed for 150 bucks. But I've run some risks there by reusing a clutch, um, the throw out bearing, um, and that happened to be one of those all you can carry days, you know, where you pay 150 bucks and everything that you can carry. Um, some, uh, a lot of junkyards will have half price days like on New Year's or Christmas Eve or, uh, you know, various holidays and that, that can save you a bunch too. But in general, if you go buy a kit, it's around 1500 bucks. Now, while we're, while we're on this, let me just throw out my philosophy on a couple of things. Uh, when you get parts from the junkyard, you're, you're gambling a little bit. And a couple of the things that I don't like to gamble with because they're a pain to replace is the clutch and the throwout bearing. Either of those requires to pull the transmission off to put a new one on. So in my opinion and for my time, it's worth it to me to go buy the new ones. So if I do a kit, I'll then get a new clutch Unless I just happen to find one at the junkyard that just looks perfect, I generally don't reuse a clutch. And the same with the throwout bearing. The throwout bearing, 60, 70 bucks, and on the, on the five speeds, they're even cheaper. Uh, the six speeds are a little more. But it's just not worth it to me to put a, a used one in that I really don't know how long it's gonna last for that 50 bucks more. And if it goes out, then you gotta pull that transmission back out, which means the axles come back off. It's, it's a little bit of work to pull that transmission. So for the 50 bucks, it's worth it to me to put the new one in. So it's up to you what you wanna do, but again, that makes a variation in price. Clutches also. Clutches vary in price from $300 to $1,200. If you get a South Bend Stage 3 Endurance Clutch, which is a beautiful clutch, I love them, but it's 1200 bucks for the full kit with the flywheel, the pressure plate, and the clutch plate, and the bolts. You can find a spec uh, or a, a Vallejo, or it, it kind of depends what else you're going to do to the car. You don't need that 
stage three if you haven't done any tuning on the car. But if you're considering doing tuning down the road, maybe this is a good time to go ahead and upgrade the clutch so that when you do put those bigger injectors and the bigger turbo on, you're all ready for that increased torque. Again, that's a call you're going to have to make on your own. Okay, so here's what we're going to need to do this swap from an automatic to a manual. And like I said, in this example, we're going to a six-speed. So you're going to need a shift box. All right, the automatic shift box comes out. And the shift box should have two cables, and then you're going to need the bracket that is the cable stop that mounts to the transmission. So that's really kind of three parts there. Uh, and then depending on your interior and what you want to do, you're going to need a boot and the shift knob for once you put it all back together. So that's the shifter box. Putting in a clutch, you're going to need a clutch pedal. And with the clutch pedal, these are a hydraulic clutch, so you'll need in, integral with that clutch pedal is the slave cylinder, right, to push the hydraulic fluid through. So you're going to need a clutch pedal. With that clutch pedal is a small bracket that mounts and braces that pedal assembly over on the brake pedal assembly. So you're going to need that little bracket. And then to do it properly, you're going to need two switches. There's a blue one and a gray one that mount on the pedal assembly. Uh, I believe the gray one goes above and it comes. You'll need that little bracket that it mounts on. Right. So that guy mounts there. And then the blue one mounts down here. And that's for the the safety switch so that the car won't start unless the clutch pedal is pushed in and then the cancel button the cancel switch for the cruise control you're going to need two hoses again it's a hydraulic clutch so there's the small hose that comes supplies fluid from your brake master all right so this works on brake fluid so you clip off, we'll get into exactly how this goes in, but you'll need that hose. And then you'll need the supply hose that the, the fluid under pressure gets pushed down and goes to the slave cylinder that's on top of the transmission at the end of that hydraulic hose. All right, so a couple hydraulic hoses there. Axles are different between the automatics and the manual. A little bit different length and they bolt in different and they're different bolts. So you'll need the axle and the bolts and make sure you're getting the right tip for the hubs that you have, whether it's the nut or the bolt style. All right, left and right axles. Starters, VW starters, gotta love them. Every single one of them is different. So the five speed is different than the six speed, which is different than the O1M automatic which is different from the 09A and 09G automatic. So you're gonna need a new starter. As I mentioned before, you're gonna need a flywheel, the clutch plate, and a pressure plate. Now, flywheels, I've, I've got no problem getting one of those from the junkyard. Have a good look at it, make sure it's not burnt, make sure it's not worn unevenly, and you can take them and get them resurfaced for 40, 50 bucks if you have a place local to you that'll do it, uh, which makes the clutch kit a whole lot cheaper. You're going to need a transmission. So here's an O2M six-speed transmission that will fit and is geared properly for the 1.8. As I mentioned, so that here's a six-speed throwout bearing. This is the one that came with the transmission. Hopefully you can hear that. It's a little bit crunchy. So I have a new one on order. Should come this afternoon. When you're taking the transmission out of the car that you're getting it from, or if it comes in a kit, make sure it has all the linkages to hook to the other end of the cables that are on your shift box, right? Because you need that linkage. Now in the five speed, if you use the automatic, if you use the power steering line, that comes in the automatics, the standard uh, shift linkage on top of the transmission will interfere. 
So you either have to change the shift linkage, and the Diesel Geek um, Sigma 6 or Sigma 5 shifter is a great option, but there's another 150 bucks. Or, while you're in the junkyard, you can get the power steering line for a manual. All right, so there's something else to add to your list. On the six speed, it's not as big an issue, but again, it will mount correctly and you're not worried about it interfering or rubbing on something and then getting a hole in your power steering line. Depending on what kind of transmission you're taking out, you may need a new transmission mount. The 09A uh, automatic transmission, the Tiptronic transmission, runs a different transmission mount. So you can see the difference there, and there's a different difference underneath, so you couldn't just cut that extra bolt off. So that's the one that comes off the 09A. Now the 01M uses this same transmission mount. So if you're doing an 01M to a five or six speed, you don't need the transmission mount. However, the bracket that it mounts to is different. That's the bracket that bolts to the top of the transmission for an 09A. All right, doesn't fit with the, the transmission mount that we need. So this one is already mounted on the transmission. Here's the transmission mount you need. The bracket, rather, that goes to the transmission. So make sure you get that bracket with the transmission. Some other optional stuff to consider. Here's a brake, pe uh, yes, brake pedal assembly. All right, on the manuals, it's a much smaller profile. You've probably noticed that on automatics, you have a larger, larger brake pedal. So you can cut it off, or you can put a whole new brake pedal assembly in, depending on whether you wanna lay up underneath the steering wheel to trim down that brake pedal so it doesn't interfere with the clutch pedal that will sit over here or whether you just want to bolt in a whole new assembly. There is a special tool that's required to remove this to pop the, the push rod out. Um, so if you're not familiar with that, you might be better off using a cutoff wheel and just cutting the pedal down. This one sounds kind of funny, but you can spend a lot of money on bolts. Uh, and I mentioned that a lot of these are torque to spec or stretch bolts. You're gonna need a bunch of bolts. So all the transmission bolts are different between the automatic and the manual. They're different lengths, they have different fittings on them. Um, they're, they're the same threads, because they'll bolt in between. Uh, but make sure you get the transmission bolts that you need, the axle bolts that you need, the starter bolts that you need. Um, so as you're taking one out, or when you're looking at a kit, check and see if it has all the bolts needed. One last comment on clutches. I'm sorry we're not going more in depth into clutches. That's probably an hour long discussion on its own. But the five speed and the six speed clutches are different. So whichever transmission you decide to put in, make sure that the clutch that you're getting matches. All right, that was a little bit of a long discussion about all the parts you need, but it's really hard to cover this project and not get into the weeds on every little thing you need. This is a tough project to get on video. There's a lot of work that you really just can't film. Uh, the, the space is limited, for example, putting the pedal in underneath the dashboard. I really don't have a great way of filming that. You're either staring at my back or you're staring at the carpet. So I'm gonna approach it a little bit different than my usual videoing actually doing the work. I'll do the work and then we'll come back and video what I did. Trying to describe how long this project takes is really tough because we all work at different speeds and we all have different amounts of time we can dedicate to a project at a given time. So I would say it's about three full days. The first day is tearing all the automatic stuff out. The second day is prepping and doing the wiring, installing the pedal and the, the uh, shift box. And then the third day is actually putting the transmission back in. You can't do all of it uh, at, in those stages. You have to do a little bit of wiring after you put the transmission in. 
Um, and it makes a little difference whether it's an O9A or an O1M. The O1M is a whole lot easier wiring harness to deal with than the O9A. And there's also some extra circuits that you got to add for the O9A. The speed sensor is a little bit different. Uh, how the vehicle senses speed uh, doesn't have the same speed sensor that the manual transmissions do. But we'll get into that here in a little bit. Okay, so the first day is the teardown. So we're going to take the camera now and we'll just do a walk around and I'll point out what we've gotten done in taking everything out from the automatic transmission. So here we are looking into the car so I can show you the shift box. Now getting the shift box out actually requires work underneath the car and inside the car. So you can see I've taken the console surround out and then unbolted the two bolts out of the four. There's actually four bolts. You also have to unhook the safety switch, right? That allows the car only to start in park, all right? It's basically an ignition uh, disabling cable, right? You can just pop that off the shifter and later on we'll go up and, and tear that out from the ignition. So there's two bolts on top and then two bolts underneath. So next we'll go under the car and have a look at what I've taken out under the car. Here's looking under the car. And there's the hole where the shift box drops. To get access to that shift box, you have to drop your exhaust. And in this case, it was a one piece exhaust, an aftermarket exhaust that I had to cut. So we're gonna have to either put a union on there or weld it back up once we're done. The factory exhaust has a union already there. So you can remove that union and let the full exhaust drop down. So you can slide the heat shields Right, there's my heat shield. You have to remove both the heat shields so that you can get access to the shift box. And then leave it open until you put the new shift box in because you're gonna have to route the cables on top of that uh, heat shield. So that's removing the box from underneath the car. In the engine bay, you have to remove the battery in the battery tray so that you can gain access to everything on the top of the transmission and the wiring harness because a lot of this wiring harness is going to go away. If you have an air box, your air box has to come out or in this case, it's a cold air intake, right? You can move that out of the way so that you can access everything in the transmission. Before you can take the transmission out though, you have to take the axles off. I'm not going to include installation and removal how-to in this video because there's plenty of videos how to take the axles in and out. I already have a flywheel pressure plate and clutch plate installed. So as far as mechanically, we're ready to start installing uh, the new transmission. However, we're gonna do the wiring first, right? And having that transmission out gives a little better access to run the uh, get the pedal in and run the hydraulic lines from the pedal that need to come up to the brake master cylinder. There's a little tip here we're going to cut off and one of the uh, hydraulic lines will slip on there. That runs down to the pedal and the other line comes from the bottom of the pedal and we're just going to leave it draping in there until we get the transmission in. And then we'll have some wiring to do with the TCU and the ECU. Here's the plenum chamber. We've removed the rain tray and the wipe, well, the wipers first, then the rain tray. So here's the ECU and here's the TCU. So you can see, I haven't pulled the TCU out yet, but we'll take that TCU out and this harness. We'll pop those harnesses off and take them apart to run the circuits through and then we can button all that back up. One of the things I forgot to talk about that sort of is on the parts list is the ECU. So there's a difference in programming between an automatic and a manual in the ECU. So now it depends on whether you we're talking about a diesel car or a gasser, VR6, 2.0, or 1.8. The TDIs, you can actually reprogram that ECU with VCDS at home 
to now be a manual car. And that's one of the reasons doing a TDI is easier than doing a gas car. So the gas ECUs, so like with this 1.8 VR6 or the 2.0, you can't, you cannot reprogram the ECU with VCDS. You have to flash the EEPROM uh, to change the programming in the ECU from an automatic to a manual. So one approach is to just get a new ECU. Oftentimes you can get one on eBay or at the junkyard or from your donor car, whichever way you're going about this swap. Uh, you can get an ECU from a manual car for a hundred bucks or maybe even less. And that will work, but the VINs aren't gonna match and you may have to do some adaptations with VCDS uh, because of that new ECU. For some of us, the VIN's not matching between the ECU and the car doesn't matter. But if you live in a state where they do a smog check and they plug into your ECU, that's one of their checklist items is that the VIN on the ECU matches the VIN on the car. I won't go into reasons why, but it does make sense if you really think through it. Uh, so if you just buy a new ECU and, and put it in, may be a problem for you going to get smog checked uh, or emissions testing. Uh, so that may not be something that you wanna do. You can take that new ECU to somebody that can flash ECUs and they can match it to the VIN that you have in the car. So now that new ECU will match. But it's just as easy to take your existing automatic uh, ECU and send it or take it to someone that can flash the EEPROM uh, to make it a manual car. So in this case, I happen to know a guy that's uh, about an hour away that has the setup to EEPROM flash. So I just took the ECU to him. So I had the car all torn apart anyway, popped the ECU out and took it over to him and he flashed it for me. So the ECU is something you have to think about. Again, with the TDI, you can recode it to a manual and VCDS does give you the prompts. When you pull up coding, and you read that, that code line, it gives you a little cheat sheet off to the side to tell you which digit tells you automatic, uh, five speed or six speed. Just one more thing to consider that you're gonna have to do at some point. Long story on the ECU, does need to be recoded. TDIs you can do at home with VCDS. Gasser cars, VR6, 1.8, 2.0, you cannot do at home. So covering the full swap from an auto to a manual and trying to cover some of the different uh, years and types of transmissions is just getting too big to get all into one video. So I'm gonna cut it into three parts. We'll call this one phase one. So thanks for watching phase one, overview and tear down removal. The next phase or video number two will be on the electrical wiring, which is a fairly entailed process. I can't cover every single detail, but I'll cover as much as I can. And then the third video will be putting all the hardware back in. Thanks for watching. We'll see you for video number two.